I remember one project for this class, I had to, I couldn't get textures mapped correctly to images. So if I had like the ground made out of cubes, I couldn't get the grass texture to stick on those cubes. The grass would end up on the trees, the sky would end up on the ground. It was a mess. So I ended up using random images and it's saying, oh, as this cool feature I made, every time you refresh the page, the images move to a different spot. And I actually got extra credit for that. So big brain energy, you gotta think about how to solve problems without solving problems. What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. And in this video, I wanna break down my computer science degree and all the relevant classes that I took for it in college. I know a lot of you guys are either going to college, thinking about computer science early on in your CS degree or just interested in software engineering. And I'm getting a lot of requests to make videos kind of about this topic or surrounding to it. So here we are. Wow, here's gonna be a breakdown of my computer science degree. And I'm talking really fast because there is just so much to cover in this video. Having to break down every class I took, what it was like, the hardness, the difficulty, whether it was applicable to later classes, applicable to a career. There's a lot to cover, so we gotta fly by this. And just as two quick notes, I graduated in three years instead of four, which is why I'm gonna have a heavier course load than most other people. And additionally, I don't wanna make this video about whether or not I think a computer science degree is worth it. I'm saving that for a later video that should drop next week. This video is gonna be more about, again, the breakdown of those classes and diving into everything about them. Anyway, I love talking. Let's just hop straight into the video. So college freshmen who are declared as engineering majors or some STEM majors are placed into a more advanced derivative calc, more advanced integral calc, or put in multivariable calculus, depending on whether or not they have AP Calc, AB or BC credit, or whether or not they choose to stay at what the university puts them or drop down a level. I took AP Calc in high school, but I did not take the AP test. I was placed into derivative Calc. And I personally liked that decision because it gave me, I already knew everything that this class was teaching. So I got to start the year off a little bit easier and just have a little bit of a GPA boost. And they worked out pretty well for me. I know some of my friends are putting integral calc just immediately hit the wall. Now, additionally, I was placed into one of the computer science classes for freshman fall quarters. That was, you could either be put into some very basic rudimentary programming class, intro to programming or intro to data structures. I had the option of being put in intro to data structures because I had AP computer science credit, but I had to drop down to intro to programming. And that class covered the basics of types, casting, object-oriented, all the basic uh, programming stuff you need to know. And I chose that because I hadn't coded in like over a year and a half, so I wanted a bit of a refresher on those skills. And again, that worked out pretty well. I did pretty well in the class. Even if you didn't know any programming, that class wasn't too difficult and you had plenty of office hours and tutoring session to get help. Additionally, this class and derivative calc one, essentially all the lower division classes that are intro classes are pretty massive. This class had about 400 kids and derivative calc had about 500. So, I mean, you can make plenty of friends or you can just be shy and whatever. They're just big classes. And the last class I had fall quarter was just some like liberal socialist agenda class that they made us take. And I had that and that was whatever. Then winter quarter, I took intro to data structures and algorithms where we learned the different ways of sorting data, arranging it, what are the trade-offs between one method versus the other one, as well as a bunch of different searching and sorting algorithms like merge sort, insertion sort, quick sort. And again, what are the trade-offs and benefits between all of those? This class also did have a lot of theoretical stuff, which was just pretty useless in my opinion, but you have to know like, you know, according to the white path theorem, if two nodes are on the same graph, then they must, you know, meet at some point because of some law, something. A lot of theoretical stuff you're never gonna use later on, but you just kind of just memorize, spit out on the test and just completely forget. I wanna say around 30% of the class was theoretical stuff. Not the most useful, but everything else was pretty worth. The last of this class were a bit challenging. We had to do things like place a queen on every spot on a chessboard where they wouldn't be able to like kill each other. And it really taught us a lot about how to the applicability of these data structures and when to use them and then why you wanna use this one instead of this one in certain situations. This is really every something every programmer needs to know. You cannot be a programmer and not know data structures and algorithms because you're gonna cover that tons of times in your career. So definitely do well. This was apparently a weeder class. A lot of kids failed, but I was a little bit surprised to hear that because I didn't think it was too difficult at all. The tip I'd give you guys here is just start, start, start things early, as early as possible. If a lab gets assigned today, at the very least, just read what the lab says. You don't have to like start it yet, but at least know what the lab's about because 
A lot of kids push the labs to the end of the week or just right before the due date, and then they need to get help. And so the office hours and office hours is just completely packed with every single kid needing help at the same time. If you go to office hours early and get help, then it's pretty much empty. So it's just all you and the TA and the TA will be pretty bored. So he'll just probably walk you through every little step of the lab. So you'll do well on that. Start things early, guys. It's my number one tip to do well in uh, as an engineer. I also had discrete math this quarter, which is pretty interesting. It's essentially a different type of math. You know, you have geometry, calculus, trig. Discrete is its own section. And the first half of the class learned about number theory, graph theory, probability, logic. And the other half of the class, we learned about induction, which is just a way of proving things, like prove that x squared is greater than x for all numbers greater than two. The class was moderately easy, uh, in my opinion, kind of once like three or four weeks in, once like it clicks, then everything just uh, smooth, sails pretty smooth from there. This class is also pretty fundamental for the later classes you will take like uh, algorithms and AI, because when you need to write out like sentences, you can't just say, well, you know, every time it interacts with this thing, do this, unless it interacts with that. But if it interacts with this, then do that. The way you write discrete math using ands and ors, uh, it just sets you up very well to do well in those other classes. So. Take this class pretty seriously, uh, but it shouldn't be too difficult. And lastly, I just had like some writing. I had writing too, which is just a writing class. All right, so spring quarter comes along and I have integral calc this quarter. And this class was very, very, very difficult compared to derivative calc. With derivative calc, if you don't know before coming to college, it's not too difficult to learn. You get a lot of help and you kind of just, you can sail along. But with integral calc guys, if you don't know before coming to college, you gotta be hustling and busting to get that stuff down. I had already taken that AP class back in high school, but this class was much more difficult. I remember every question on every midterm in the final was just long, complicated word problem where if you know the tree is falling at 45 degrees at four meters per second, there's an airplane over there flying 180 miles per hour. At what angle of pi do they intersect and integrate that to find the speed of the... Uh, one thing I tell you guys for this is get help for off from office hours from the TAs before midterms and finals, not just like a week before, but also like about two weeks before those tests happen. The TAs often either write the midterm or the final, or they know exactly what's gonna be on it from previous years. I remember I had one really awesome TA who was like, yeah, guys, the high probability that these three questions are gonna be on the midterms. So let's cover all three of those. And sure enough, those were all on there. Not all TAs are gonna be super useful. Some of them are just, some of them just don't even speak English that well. But go to all the TAs uh, office hours, see which one you like the best. And then, you know, obviously, you know, go to their office hours and do well in the midterm and the final. I grinded pretty hard for this class and I did pretty well, so I was happy about that. But I know it was a big smack in the face for a lot of kids. I also had linear algebra this quarter. It's similar to the stuff you guys did probably back in pre-calc with those matrices and you have to like rotate them and transpose them and move them around and multiply and subtract and all that stuff. But on some serious steroids, uh, you had to do a lot of these crazy transformations with these. And you know, this is like those 15 step matrix problems. We have to write the rewrite the matrix like 15 times to solve the end of the problem. And a lot of vector stuff as well, which is vectors are just lines or points in a 3D space. So you're checking like, is this vector orthogonal to this vector and how are they moving? How are they changing? And it's not, it's never just real numbers. That'd just be too easy for us. They have to throw in a bunch of pi's and theta's and alpha's and beta's, just a bunch of Greek math in there to make it more challenging. But this class is pretty fundamental if you guys wanna go into game design, because once you understand how these matrices move around and how these vectors work, you can see, like imagine if a character's in a 3D space, how they're turning, if they're moving around, what are they facing, if they're perpendicular to other characters. So this class is a prerequisite for um, computer graphics, which, I, which I'll cover in a little bit, but it was a really awesome class and I learned a lot, but it was challenging in the sense where we covered so much material in a very short amount of time. So you were just flying by and the midterm and the final was like the typical thing in college where everybody fails. I got like a 60 and a 50 uh, for those and they gets rounded up to like an 85 and an 88. But again, this was just a lot of stuff being covered. So you gotta be on it because there's no time to stay behind. And lastly, I just took some online class on national parks and rocks. 
If you guys have the option to take an online class over an in-person one, go with the online. Well, I know nowadays everything, almost everything's online because of the era we're in, but the online one tends to be much easier and it's graded much more leniently. So go with the online option. And then that summer, I did not have an internship. So I took some online classes, uh, not online, uh, community college classes. These were like women's literature, ethnic studies, and something else, uh, just complete garbage classes to you know remind me of my privileges and all that stuff. But the thing is, if you don't have an internship, I'd highly recommend you guys take as many GEs as you can at community college over the summer. Most likely they'll be transferring just the pass or the no pass, not the actual grade. So all you need is a C or higher and you get the credit for it. You know, take these classes at college. So might as well just take them at the community college where they're much cheaper. And you also get ahead credit wise, which will make enrolling for classes much easier. You'll have priority enrollment over other people your age. My, I asked my counselor about this and she's like, oh, these classes are super hard. Just only take a maximum of three if you really wanna put the work in. I have taken like 10 or 15. <laughs> it's not even that many, but classes were super easy. I was working a job at the same time. So stack up on those classes, especially again, if they're online. Now, sophomore year, fall quarter, the big, big, big class I had here was data structures and algorithms. This class is the bread and butter of CS. And it's just stuff every software engineer has to know. We obviously covered data structures and algorithms, but we dove much deeper into different algorithms and their trade-offs between them as well as more advanced data structures and how they can relate to each other and how you can have you know a hash map of hash maps, of linked lists, of hash maps, all that stuff. Uh, about 30% of this class was theoretical, which again, was a complete waste of time and you just memorized and spit it out on the test. I did really enjoy the labs in this class. They were very challenging and very thought provoking because you have to think of a ton of edge cases to handle these things. For example, one lab I did was large in integer multiplication. So obviously Java, it's like two to the 32 minus one is like the maximum integer it can hold. But what happens when you have like an integer that's like 58 numbers long, multiply by that integer that's like 72 numbers long. How do you compute those things? And you guys thinking of all these edge cases. Well, oh, what about this? And oh, but what about that? And one thing I learned here was you guys have to do a little bit of pre-planning. With earlier classes, you could just, you know, hop on the computer, read the problem and just boom, 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 type out a solution and it worked more or less. With this class, like there's so many like things that can happen. Oh yeah, I didn't think about this and the program finishes, but oh, what about that? You have to go back and rewrite the program again and again and again. Really just take a second to plan out what your code's gonna be. I wouldn't recommend pseudocode, uh, just you know, have like an outline of, well, we'll do it this way and that way, and then have an edge case for this, and just run through your head some possible scenarios to see whether you need to change that up. Because I did a lot of you know writing an entire program, I forgot about a couple cases, let me rewrite it. I forgot about a couple cases, let me rewrite it and just keep doing that process. It'll save you a lot of time to plan it out before. I also had multivariable calc this quarter and this was the hardest, hardest math class I had ever taken. Again, you had a large amount of material being covered in a very short period of time and we went pretty in depth into everything. Additionally, as I mentioned, the same, I had the same professor for this one as integral calc. Every question was a word problem. If your sphere is driving on a truck and the truck's going at this speed and there's water being filled into the sphere at this speed, how long would it take for three fourths of the sphere? Just complete mess. And again, never just straight up numbers. There's always pi's, thetas, and betas and a lot of, a lot of stuff going on there. This class though, thankfully, was just hard for everybody that took it. So just because I wasn't doing too well, everyone else was struggling. Uh, I definitely tried my best. Okay, that's a lie. I actually failed. I did very poorly on a midterm uh, for this class and the midterm for intro to, uh, my data structure and algorithms class. I think I was on a pretty big ego boost freshman year. So I thought, you know what? Got this in the bag, I don't need to study too much. And I failed uh, maybe both or just got D's on both, but it was bad. Thankfully, I had two midterms and a final, so I had a chance to just raise my grade up and I got like my stuff together. But definitely guys, like don't be on a huge ego boost. Like it's better to overstudy than understudy. Anyway, after that winter quarter, sophomore year, I was now able to take upper division courses. I had finished CSC uh, 101, which is the data structure and algorithms, and also taken like some other requirements here and there. So I was pretty ahead. Most people would start people to take upper divs their junior year. But again, I was on that three year expedited pathway. And we had to take five upper division classes and five electives for uh, to graduate. So the first upper div I took was comparative programming languages. This class I think was meant to just show us like how co uh, coding languages are written and the similarities between them and what they're based on. 
But in reality, we were just struggling to learn six programming languages in 12 weeks. And these aren't like, you know, Python and Java. It's no, it's Scheme, OCaml, Smalltalk, Perl, Prolog. It's not people have not used in like decades. But uh, that was doable. We had to write basically like a moderately difficult program for all of them and just learn the syntax to obviously be able to write the program. That was challengingly difficult, like not insanely difficult. The hard part was the midterm and the final we're expected to just write out in that moment, just, you know, small like coding snippets of different problems that were given. And you obviously it's hard to remember all six of those languages when you just learned them and you can't reference the internet. But thankfully, you know, like, uh, uh, the pandemic and everything happened. So I was able to do the final online and really bump my grade up. Now I took my first ever elective this quarter and I chose to take intro to computer graphics. This class we covered WebGL, OpenGL, JavaScript, and a little bit of HTML. And it was essentially just a low levels class. So it was very difficult to get things up and running on the screen, making a sphere or a cube or coloring it was just very difficult. So I was a lot of office hours that were pretty much always packed because of the challengingness. There's I wouldn't say it was challenging, it was just so much new stuff that we hadn't learned before and it was hard to get help on the internet. So a lot of people weren't office hours uh, and uh, tutoring sessions to get help. And you didn't take that linear algebra class I mentioned earlier, so you kind of understand like what your object is looking at, how other objects are interacting with it and getting all those matrices and vectors working in a 3D space. I remember one project for this class, I had to, I couldn't get textures mapped correctly to images. Uh, so if I had like, the ground made out of cubes. I couldn't get the grass texture to stick on those cubes. The grass would end up on the trees, the sky would end up on the ground. It was a mess. So I ended up using random images and it's saying, oh, as this cool feature I made, every time you refresh the page, the images move to a different spot. And I actually got extra credit for that. So big brain energy, you gotta think about how to solve problems without solving problems. I did learn a lot. It's actually probably the most fun class I ever took in college. I did stay in touch with the professor one or two times after this class when I took a later graphics and renderings class uh, later on that I'll cover in a second. But I definitely had a great time. This is the one class where it's like, you know what? If every college class was like this, I would honestly think that college wasn't a scam. So great time in that one. Now I also had CE 12 this quarter, which is like the big, big weeder class for all CS and CE majors, which makes people just wanna immediately drop out. You covered how a CPU works, registers, uh, computer design, logic, system design, and you know, MIPS, which is a assembly language. This class was hard. It was hard in the sense that what we learned in lectures didn't even correlate to what our projects or assignments or homework was even about. And professors make sure to make that the TAs and the tutors are just super ambiguously vague when you ask for help. So nobody really knows what's going on. We're all trying to get help from each other, but nobody can help each other. I went to a lot of office hours and tutoring and sections and it just, it was difficult. And this really was, as much as I didn't like this class, it did kind of instill in you just working hard and finding some way to get your stuff done, which is you need to do when you can take like even harder uh, upper division classes. A lot of kids failed this class. A lot of people on Reddit complain at the end of the year, at the end of the quarter. But I, even all the hard work I put in, I still didn't do that well. I guess it's a little bit easier for CE majors, but again, you just gotta, get, you gotta grind in college. So I passed the class and I just moved on from there. Moving on to spring quarter, everything was unfortunately remote from here till the end of the year, but that is what it is because the whole pandemic. And at this point in time, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into computer graphics. I like that intro class. I wanted to see if it's something I want to do after college. So I took a upper division graphics and rendering course. Now this was not a CS course. It was a, a computational media course, but because of something, I was able to transfer that uh, to make up one of my CS electives because of some, I don't know, something they had on the coursework. So it all worked out there. And in this class, we use 3JS, which is the huge graphics library, which makes it a million times easier to create things with graphics versus the low level stuff in WebGL and OpenGL in my intro class. So with very small amounts of code, I was making these really awesome projects. And we also messed around with Unity's graphics as well. I ended up taking the final project of this class and going like super up above and beyond to make it a personal project. And I put it on my resume. You guys can always check out on my LinkedIn. And essentially in that project, I made a 3D model of our solar system using all those libraries as well as some few external ones. And I had ray casting, texture maps, shadows, normal maps to create this like really, really nice visual effect and a lot of interactive things people could do. So it took me about three or four months to get that project to where I was happy with it. 
and I did get a lot of questions about it in uh, job interviews. So that was, I'm glad I did that. I also had some like probability theory class this quarter. I cannot even remember a single thing about this class. I just remember everything, every homework, every quiz, every midterm, every final, every question was on Chegg. So I obviously just pulled it off Chegg and, you know, changed it up so it wouldn't look suspicious or anything. Uh, but yeah, it was just on probability, but I, I'm, it's amazing I could not remember a single thing in that class. And lastly, I had computer architecture, which is also a pretty difficult class and more CE based, which is computer engineering, which a lot of CS majors have to take for some reason. We covered virtual memory, caching, uh, digital systems. We covered the pipeline of how CPU instructions are executed and also just how uh, CPUs have evolved over time. This was the first and only class I ever failed in college. I just bombed the final for some reason, so I had to retake it fall quarter. Uh, even when I retook it, well, I'll cover that in a second. But this quarter, as I mentioned uh, before, I was on Accelerated Pathways this quarter, I was taking three upper division uh, CS in the CMPE class. So it was definitely a lot of work. Had there not even been a pandemic, would have just been at the library or studying regardless. I wouldn't recommend you guys take the expedited pathway unless you have like a ton of credits going into college because I knew that I would have had no social life had college uh, been as normal. But anyway, after my end of my sophomore year, I interned over the summer at AMD for three months. I had a lot of fun there. I definitely gave me some real world exposure. It was in server performance, so not a lot of software engineering related stuff. I did also get my internship extended from three months to six months. So fall quarter while I was at school, I was also interning full time. So I had no life, like zero life, like work eight hours, next six hours I'm studying uh, for doing school stuff and just going to bed. No friends, nothing. I mean, obviously we're in the pandemic, but I just had nothing in my life except for school and work. So obviously speaking of fall quarter, the first class I had to retake was computer architecture. Even though I retaken the class before, I still did pretty poorly this quarter, but at least I passed and I had to move on with it. I also had a different professor, which was, I think a little bit more challenging than my previous one, which was a bad stroke of luck. But I did definitely learn a little bit more about the, uh, everything I mentioned, computer architecture. And it did help, that did translate a lot into my internships. So I was working more, a little bit more on the hardware side of things. I also had intro to algorithm analysis this quarter. And this is actually a very useful class about learning about big O, recurrence relations, upper and lower bounds. And even the theoretical stuff, which I'm not a big fan of, as you guys can tell, was still very useful because when I got interview questions, they would ask me things like, oh, remind me, how does Prim's algorithm work? How, what's the lowest cost spanning trees? Remind me of how does this graph theorem work? What's, uh, what's the worst case for insertion sort? And I would just reference back to this class and everything that they could have asked me, I had covered in this class. And it was just an awesome help for interviews, um, especially when they get a little bit more on the theoretical side of things to go into algorithm. It was a challenging class. Uh, I didn't do that great, but I learned a lot in the process of it. And just everything about this class was applicable to interviews or at least uh, classes going on later on. So glad I took this class, glad I took it fall quarter. So I had, before I started my whole job hunt and interview search for the next year, I had taken this class to at least set me like, with a solid foundation. And the last class I had this quarter was computational models where you went over, you know, regular languages and context-free grammars and pumping lemmas. And if you guys don't know what that means, don't worry, I still don't even really know what any of it means. It's really just all just theoretical stuff, uh, like kind of like Turing algorithms, and you're just you're trying to take a sentence in English and turn it into like a language a computer can understand and breaking it down and transferring it to other languages. This is one of those classes where you just, nobody really has any idea what's going on, but you have like a template to do one problem. So you're just copying that same template for every single other problem and making small changes. And you're just obviously spitting that out on the final. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say about this class. It was just, just ambiguously vague and yeah, I don't think anyone really remembers it. It was one of the classes you had to take as a CS major to make you well-rounded and you just spit it out and forgot about it. The one nice thing though, was since I had gotten an internship and it would have been a six month internship, I completely stopped paying my GPA. So I did not do like well in these classes, so to speak. I got like Bs and maybe some Cs, but I couldn't care less uh, that real world experience and interning is way more important. And since I had, since I was doing that at the same time, I did, did it last summer. Grades are only really a huge deal. All right, so winter quarter rolls around and the year, my last year in college is winding down. 
The big class I took here was computer system design. This class covered how things are put on the CPU, operating systems, virtual versus physical memory, caching, layering, synchronization, uh, and just how things happen when you write code and what's happening in the background of your computer. Although this class, again, this class was like more CE based, it was like very challenging, probably one of the most difficult classes I took. But this class, it kind of gave you like a sense of like understanding where, hey, like I know how a CPU actually works and you know, maybe I can write code in a certain way that'll make it easier for the operating system to run it. Not really, this class didn't really have any applicability to us software engineers, but it did give me like a sense of like fulfillment knowing how a CPU works. Last for this class, we had projects and we had labs. So there was, this class kept us really on our toes and we, a lot of them were based around synchronization, which is how a computer can do multiple things at the same time. And what happens when it runs into a deadlock when you know this thing needs this resource and the thing that has that resource needs that resource, the thing that has that resource needs this resource back and things lock up. So how would we account for those things? How does it, uh, uh, we also had our, we created like our own like operating system where we just scheduled things and worked with different schedules. Um, and it was just, again, it just gave you the fulfillment of how a computer works. Not really applicable, but good to know in a sense. Um, and yeah, it was a hard class. And then I also took artificial intelligence this quarter. I actually did not want to take this class. I had no interest whatsoever in AI, but the class, the other elective I wanted was taken. So I just had to take this one. And we covered, you know, obviously about artificial intelligence, uh, searching, reasoning, uh, different like models and how to predict what an AI does and different, how different kinds of machine learning models work. So like one example I still remember to this day, is essentially that, an AI wants to make the best possible decision by looking at all future decisions. But there's obviously so many to compute, even with like a very small game or a small problem. So how do you prune those decisions? You only, you look at what's most likely to happen and that way you can cut your decisions down. And there's a lot of algorithms that go into that that you'll learn as well. The projects in this class were mostly, actually all were just based on Pac-Man. We created our, like a Pac-Man, we just slowly made it better and better and better by learning new things. I remember one thing that I taught, we at the end of the class, we, all of our Pac-Man competed against each other where we had one Pac-Man that was collecting food and one that was defending food on our side of the board. I remember one cool thing I did was I created like a trapping feature where if the Pac-Man gets another Pac-Man in like a cave, normally that Pac-Man would just eat it, right? But the thing is the other person's Pac-Man didn't account for that. So it would just go back and forth like, oh, can't go this way, there's a wall, can't go this way, there's an opponent, so just stuck there. Well, my Pac-Man just standing there and just waiting for it, just, just letting time go by. So that was a smart move I did. I wasn't the only one who did that. And I definitely didn't do the best in that tournament. I think I came at halfway through, but I guess it was cool learning about AI. I was very interested in it, and, but the professor was fun and it was cool, you know, trying to make like an AI with the Pac-Man. So I'll give her that. And last, I just take my last GE, which was just some two unit class about current politics, but it was like obviously skewed very far left and they didn't like any conservatives or libertarians or independents. So not really learning anything, just being indoctrinated, but whatever. And then finally came spring 2021, end of my junior year, my last quarter in college. And I made sure ahead of time, this would be the lightest load quarter I would have to take because at the same time I was that winter quarter and you know spring quarter, I was applying to job, which is like a huge task on its own. So I'm practicing lead code, I'm out applying every day, I'm brushing up my skills, I'm networking on top of college. So I planned that in the worst case where I didn't have a job by, by the time the last quarter kicked in, which is actually what happened, I would have a very light workload so I could focus more on that versus being stuck taking like three very difficult classes in school. The first class I had this quarter was web applications. So I had no intention of becoming a front end engineer, but it was an easy class, an easy professor I had to take it. And I was learning about, you know, the basics of CSS, HTML, and uh, and just getting, you know, basic static web pages created, making them look all pretty with CSS. And then once, that was about the first half of the class. The second half of the class, it like really picked up. Once you started connecting everything to databases and caching things locally versus externally, that got pretty tricky. Working with Pi for web, which is not a very difficult framework, had even worked with Node or something would have been a lot more challenging. They could have given us a lot harder projects, but this wasn't too bad. And again, I wasn't really focused too hard on my grade because I was more focused because I already had the internships and GPA doesn't really matter too much in college once you have that first internship. So kind of just breezed by this class, uh, picked up a few things, but nothing I think to really help me as a back end or just typical software engineer. And I only had two classes this quarter. So my last one was technical writing where I learned how to write a resume, project proposal, grant proposal, posters, 
uh, and all that stuff where you have to present information to other people, whether at work or in different aspects of uh, academia. Easy class, um, not much more to it than that. Uh, and I guess there was a bit of useful stuff uh, in that class, but nothing you really didn't know ahead of time. Oh, actually I take that back. I did have one more class this quarter. I had intro to Python. I need to take three classes uh, just for some for some reason. So I just took that class and I never went to class and I just failed the midterm and the final. But I took it as pass, no pass, so it wouldn't affect my GPA. Not that I really care too much about it. But yeah, guys, that is my three-year computer science degree. Now, depending on what school you go to, this might vary a bit. I know some schools are big into physics or changing the curriculum more towards Python. But more or less, you'll be learning about the same stuff. Uh, this is also the most I could possibly remember in my head. I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that just like reads in front of the camera and just talks to you guys. Uh, this was like a better interaction. Just kind of remember what I remember because the things that would stick out to me would probably be the more memorable moments in those classes and things that are more important. But anyway, guys, that's the breakdown of my degree. Uh, definitely hit me up on LinkedIn if you guys have any more questions. I'll have it in the description below or just look up my name. And also my projects on GitHub, if you guys wanna check those out and want inspiration for what to do for your you know, resume projects in the future. But yeah, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys wanna see on next upcoming videos. Subscribe for more content and I'll catch you guys next week for the next video.